thank you very much. Um, grand title um, in 10 minutes, um, but I'll do my best. If we look at maybe the present before we go back to the past uh, and see how we got here, there's uh, 450 companies, uh, med tech companies in, in, in Ireland, but 60% of these are indigenous. A large portion of these are small and medium enterprises. But it is a huge employer um, and it's a huge um, contributor to um, the economy. And it's largely on our doorsteps. So in academia, we're here um, doing our research, uh, but there's a whole industry cluster out there that we can interact with. And we do, many of us anyway, um, on a daily basis. So let's go to the past. And I, I could go back, you know, 9,000 years, but 10 minutes, I don't think so. Um, but there is, uh, medical devices have been there from dental applications from the very, very start, from Stone Age times, and, and their tools have been there. But let's bring a little bit more focus to it and let's talk about Ireland, let's talk about the region and um, how, how we've got here. So if we look at the IDA focus um, uh, for foreign direct investment, it's been going back since the formation of the state. And uh, it's largely been focused on manufacturing and so people and tax. Uh, and, and that has been, on, I suppose, until the, the, the most recent decades. And there is history of uh, various different clusters and uh, for those of us um, who have a, a little bit of history in this space, there, there was a hat factory in Bohemor that, that brought the Bruzzies to, uh, to Galway in the 1940s. Um, but there was a whole clothing industry from the 1930s onwards. Um, you had Galway textiles, you had um, Farrell, uh, you had Fruit of the Loom in Donegal. There was also an electronics manufacturing industry. Um, and I think many of us would probably remember digital, um, but there was Nortel and there was many other companies, huge employers in Galway. And again, this was the IDA focus, uh, bringing in companies that would focus on manufacturing, provide employment, contribute to the economy. And it's been very largely successful. Um, and in isolated cases, we did have interaction between academia and these industries, um, and there was some research activity, but it was minor. Um, and there was companies that sprung out of these multinationals that, uh, that service these multinationals, um, companies like Craigana. And this is a, a theme that I'm going to talk a little bit about. Um, so Craigana was a service supplier to some of these hardware, hardware electronics companies. Many of us would know Craigana as Craigana Medical today, who exclusively focus on medical devices. And then there was 1993, um, digital uh, folded, uh, or at least folded in Ireland, um, and uh, it really it was a huge loss to employment, and it really made people focus of these industries are coming and going, and uh, what are we going to do different? And this was, I suppose, the, the start of a, a medtech cluster. Um, C.R. Bard was here from the 1980s, but straight after that digital closure, in the same site, Boston Scientific were brought in, and this was a, a huge employer. And, and really germinated something that has become a very substantial cluster uh, within Galway and within Ireland and within the world. And many companies followed. And uh, some of these companies, or a large amount of these companies, focused on PTCA guide wires or, or catheters. Um, so we became cardiovascular town. Um, but there was other products, um, uh, Baxter focusing on urethral products. And Craigana in 1998 focused exclusively then on medical. Some may say they didn't have a choice, or some may say it was a strategic decision, but that's where they evolved to. Um, and they have become a huge company w within the Galway region. In academia, um, there was an increased focus then on, well, how do we keep these clusters here? Um, or from a government policy point of view, how do we keep these companies here? Uh, let's focus on embedding R&D. There was R&D tax credits introduced. There was the PRTLI funding for academia, encouraging more research activity. Uh, much of it basic research, not necessarily collaborating with industry, but you know, it was, it was good to create that foundation of research. Um, so we had the, um, but we still had this, found, found a, this fundamental problem where we have the clinic, um, we have academia, and we have industry largely operating separately, not necessarily overlapping. I, I, this is a huge generalization. Of course, there was interaction with industry. Of course, the research faculty uh, in medicine were, were interacting with the academia. Um, but if you look from a company point of view and an indigenous company point of view, 
you know, there were companies, but they were service suppliers. There was no end user product uh, companies. There was no companies developing and providing patients with, with, with solutions. Uh, there was a handful, um, but there was only a handful. You know, you had Mednova, Caradine, Aerogen. Some of these are, um, you know, still employers here in the sector, but more importantly, these were the germination of companies that focused on developing products for themselves rather than servicing the multinationals. And it was widely recognized that there was a need for more synergy. And I think this came into my life, certainly, in 2010, straight after the economic crash of 2008. Everybody was saying, how do we do things differently? You know, we, we can't just do more of the same. Uh, and this is where someone called Ian Quinn, uh, he was the founder of Craig Anna, uh, evolved it to Craig Anna Medical. Uh, he happened to go out to California, uh, where he had a company, uh, or had a, an operation out there and visited Stanford University and said, whoa, there's, you know, we have a foreign direct, and there's multinational companies sitting alongside entrepreneurs, sitting alongside finance, sitting alongside medical excellence. And why aren't they all, they're all interacting. Why aren't we doing something like this? Why do we only have this handful of startup companies rather than, you know, indigenous companies just focusing exclusively on, on servicing the multinationals? So this is where enabling our startups um, really became a theme. And this is what uh, Ian Quinn championed. He championed the formation of BioInnovate. And really, BioInnovate is an education program. It's there to educate people. It's not there to create companies. It's not there to you know, service um, existing industry. I think it does all of those, but it does through people. It does through education, through training, getting people to interact, really trying to put um, an activity where academia and the clinic can work together, where academia and the industry can work together, and, and where all three can, can work together towards a common goal. Ten years, and we were 12 years later, but let's skip the two COVID years. Uh, ten years later, um, there's some very significant output. Uh, 130, 140 people going through the program. Um, 260 million in follow-on funding going into the companies that have come out of this. 54% of the people going into the, into the sector, they're bringing education, entrepreneurial spirit, um, both into existing startups, their own startups, and also into multinationals, as well as back, back into the hospital. And, and this is an activity that I, I think I encourage everybody to get involved in. Um, people focus on the strong pipeline and projects of companies that come out. Uh, and these are just a few. And, you know, there's big headlines there of a company raising 30 million or 25 million. You know, the individuals aren't getting that money. These are going to support development. This is creating jobs. So, you know, it's a, it's a very exciting space to be in, but it's all about the interaction between the clinic, academia, and industry. And it's supported by whom? You know, rather than listing out a pile of logos, which obviously I'm going to do, it's supported by the people in these sectors. So, you know, it's not supported by uh, Craig Anna. It's supported by people in Craig Anna. It's not supported by Enterprise Ireland. It's supported by people. Uh, and this is the community effort, really, that has encouraged innovation and um, really provided great opportunity for, for people uh, training and for interaction between academia, clinic, and industry. You know, so where's the future? Well, if you were to critique the industry, you would say, well, it's costing more and more. Healthcare is costing more and more. Everything is just going up in price. Uh, and I'm not talking about inflation, but I'm talking about we want to spend more on health, out, better outcomes. We want to spend more on providing a better quality of life. But it's not necessarily sustainable. So I'm not going to predict the future, but a theme of the future is, is wellness, it's about prediction, it's about prevention, it's about encouraging patients to participate in their own health. Uh, and this is an area that not just by Innovate will focus on, but I think we should all focus on, whether it's in industry, whether it's in research, um, or whether it's in, um, uh, in the clinic itself. So there is opportunity, and the opportunity is in collaboration, uh, and I would c encourage you all to get involved uh, and interact with the, the medtech cluster that's on our doorstep. So I'd like to say thank you, um, not just to, for you to listening, but I'd also like to say thank you to Ian Quinn. Uh, Ian passed away in 2020. Um, it was COVID. I don't think people uh, got to say thank you to him directly, but he was the person who started by Innovate. He's the person who championed a lot of the companies coming out of it. Um, and he was a, not just a very successful businessman, but he was a very, he was a very strong mentor to, to a lot of people. So 
Thank you.